We're so glad that you joined us for our online service. I'm Pastor Alex, the executive pastor here at Gold Creek. In a minute, we're gonna get started with our worship song, as well as a message for you. Before we do though, if you're new here, maybe you've been watching for a little while, but you just haven't connected with us here yet, we would love to connect with you. There's a number on the screen, you text Gold Creek. It allows our team to follow back up with you. Maybe you're looking to get into a connect group, Bible study, maybe you're looking to volunteer, whatever it might be, we wanna help you get connected to Gold Creek. That's how you make this church your own. And for all of you who have been contributing with your time and your resources, thank you so much. Like this is a time where we're still learning how to do church. So there's a number on the screen and you text GC Mill Creek to that number. It's gonna give you a link back that allows you to give a financial contribution to that. And again, thank you for being so faithful. Every day we're learning how to do ministry in a whole new way. And it is some days challenging, but it's so encouraging to see you, Gold Creek, step up and financially help us make it happen. So thank you. So we're gonna start with our worship and then a message. Join me. Lie on, sit down, 
coming after me There's no shadow he won't light up Mountains and you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow feel like you're locked inside of the cares of life? If you ever feel like that life is just crowding down on you and making it feel like you're on lock down, like you in prison? <laughs> For the past month, we've been talking about flip it. Looking at life circumstances and flipping it around and looking at it from a whole different perspective. Recently, I saw a movie called Brian Banks. Brian Banks was wrongfully accused and put in prison. And as he was frustrated, had so much opportunity to be successful in life, the fact that he was now in prison weighed him down. And the prison counselor played by Morgan Freeman came to him and said, prison or jail is a gift. It can be a gift with the right perspective. And just like uh, Morgan Freeman said to the character Brian Banks, your circumstances, I'm telling you today, that your circumstances, the difficult times, can be a gift and can bring about life and joy to yourself and other people if you just flip it, if you shift the perspective. But in order to shift the perspective, in order to flip it properly, and understanding what the proper perspective is, there are several things that you have to do that I want to encourage you to do today. And so if you turn with me to Philippians chapter 4 in your Bibles, or it's right here on the screen, verse 1 says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. So the first thing that you got to do in flipping it and making sure you have the right perspective is you got to stay true. What? 
<laughs> stay true. You got to stay true. Stay true to who? What does it stay? Say stay true to the Lord. God has called us, you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible says this, that we've been brought with the price. In other words, Jesus Christ died on the cross, resurrected for us, gave us new life, and has called us to this life of being a bond servant, locked into him, not our circumstances. So if you're going to flip it, you got to stay true. What is it that's tempting you to stay false to him? Whoa, what is it that's tempting you? All of us have our things. For some people, it's diet, the food. For some people, it's anger. For some people, it's alcohol. For some people, it's sexual immorality. For some people, it's greed. For some people, it's putting down other people. For some people, it's lying. All of us have different things that tempt us to draw away from him. But Paul is saying, if you're going to flip it, you got to stay true. Here's what you got to understand. Every single difficult thing that, that comes to you, it will either draw you closer to God or pull you away from God. <gasps> the tragedy, the difficulty that you face will either drive you closer to God or pull you away from God. So if you're going to flip it, you need to make sure that the things that you experience in the difficulty is drawing you to God. How do you do that? How do you draw closer to God when, when your marriage is frustrating you? How do you draw closer to God when your children are frustrating you? How do you draw closer to God when, when it seems like society is against you? How do you, as a police officer, draw closer to God when it seems like the, everyone is saying, or people who you don't agree with are saying, defund you? How do you, as a minority, draw close to God when it's seems like from your perspective everybody is coming after you oh how do you draw closer to God when you want to fight for those who don't have a voice and fight for injustice whoa how do you draw closer to God when God's called you to a mission field to this big project and, and it seems like everything is going against you how do you draw close to God when you're experiencing so many difficulties how do you stay true that's a great question. And it has all to do, as that character told Brian, Brian Banks, it's your perspective. It's how you look at it. You can look at it as negative. You can look at it and say, God hates you, oh, which is horrible. God doesn't hate you. God loves you. But you can look at your circumstances and say, maybe God wants me to cling to him. Maybe I can't work it out. So I need to run to God so he can work it out for me. You got to stay true. The next thing it says, let's flip down to verse four. This one is absolutely amazing. This is, this is it. So, so staying true. Now, I, and notice I said you got to make sure you have the right perspective. Sometimes real talk is difficulty. It's difficult to have the right perspective when things are rough. Can I get an amen? Can I get a boom shakalaka? Well, Paul gives the second thing that you got to do to flip it. The first one is to stay true. The second one is this. Verse 4 says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, again I say rejoice. It says always be full of joy. Jesus came and taught John 15, so that his joy can be in us and that his joy can be full. Joy doesn't mean always grinning and ignoring problems. That's not what joy means. But joy, the Lord's joy, is even in difficulty. You can have peace 
and gladness and look at life circumstances and know that everything is going to be all right. God's going to work it out. He's going to give you the insight or give you ways to handle it. So you don't have to carry the load yourself. You don't have to carry it. It's tough. Yes, life can be tough. And life is tough. Yes, raising kids by yourself, single mama, can be tough. Yes, single dad, life can be tough. Yes, marriage couple whose marriage is experiencing tough times, it can be tough. But God doesn't want you to have to carry the burden by yourself. He wants to carry it with you. Listen, you ever seen a little kid or somebody in college struggling back in the day when you were moving into the college dorm and you were see people struggling and then all of a sudden a group of students would come and they would help you with your stuff upstairs instantly people are like Whoa, thanks so much listen if college students who help people move in dorms can bring relief God wants to help you carry your stuff and God instantly brings relief he, br relief. he gives you joy when you allow him to carry your burdens so Paul says, man, rejoice. Always, always be full of joy. <laughs> How do you always be full of joy when life is always coming at you? Maybe you have to consistently give it to God. Give the burden to God. And he says, I say it again, rejoice. Don't forget, rejoice, stay joyful, stay joyful, stay joyful, stay joyful. Did I say stay joyful? Stay joyful. Paul said rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. <laughs> How can a person smile in the midst of great difficulty? How can a person have peace when, when life looks chaotic, when the prison walls or the walls of life seem to lock you in. Paul says, rejoice. Stand true to God. Don't go off and go sideways and, get, and, and start to act twisted. You stay, stay true to God and your actions and your mindset and the way that you think. And what helps you stay there even more, what locks that in is by having joy. And you're able to have joy when you're able to trust God and know that he's got it. Mm. So he says this, verse five, let everyone that you Consider it and all joy. Let me let me back up. Let me let me let me back up. We're gonna edit that part. Um, so always, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this. Let me read this one more time before we move on. Always be full of joy in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. I cannot say this enough times. Rejoice. Uh, the Reverend Al Green said. Everything is going to be all right. He's coming back. Woo! Like he said he would. Listen, everything is going to ultimately be all right. Even Bob Marley said, don't worry. Woo! About a thing. Hey! Because every little thing is going to be all right. Hey! Singing, don't worry. About a thing, ain't got no place to lay your head. Somebody came and took your bed. Don't worry. I'll be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Do, 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 do. Don't worry. Be joyful. Stay true. And be thirdly considerate. It says, verse 5, let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming. Be considerate. Consider, you, you want to flip life circumstances in your family, 
You want to flip life circumstances in your community, in your end, in your career? Be considerate. Let everyone see that, that you uh, mirror your heavenly father, where you understand even your enemies, you approach them with a certain level of understanding. Whoa, how can you do that? You just got to understand. Jesus said it's easy. If you do good to people who do good to you, how hard is that? But when you start to consider those who actually pluck your nerves, that's when the ooh-wee shows up. That's when the goodness of God shows up. That's when people can really see that you are different because you're treating people right who don't treat you right. The people who seemingly to build the prison bars up around you and you still consider it to them. Mm. Let everybody see it. Don't just treat the person right in private. You treat them right publicly. Don't just disrespect them. Don't, don't just respect them in a private conversation, but respect them in front of the entire company, in the board meeting, in, in, in the midst of the family, in the midst of your children, in the midst of your spouse. Make sure you are considerate to others. And he says this, ah, uh, don't worry about anything, verse 6. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done for you. Listen to me. Listen to me good. God is the ultimate father. And some of us may not even have had parents growing up. So when we say that God is father, that kind of brings about a bad uh, connotation in your mind. But in your idea of what a great father is, God is so much better than that. And God doesn't want his children to be anxious, to be scared to worry. He, he doesn't. The Bible even says that God looks after the sparrow. His eyes are on the sparrow. He watches over the birds and gives them food, gives them shelter. And if God watches over the sparrow, he watches over you. God does not want you to worry. God as a father, doesn't want his children to worry about anything. It's, as, as a dad, I enjoyed my babies when they were little, just telling me everything. And my goal as a father was to look after them and, for, to, and to protect them and make sure nothing happened to them. And I always love, even to this day, now that my kids still range from nine all the way up to 18, I love for all six of my kids to tell me when they are hurting or when they're concerned and when they're excited. And God wants us to do the same for him, with him. Tell them every single thing that bothers you and that you are afraid of. This, this brings me great comfort. Whenever I'm nervous, whenever I stand up in front of a large crowd, a small crowd, whenever I have tasks, whenever I feel like I am worrying and whenever I am worrying, <laughs> whenever I'm, I'm deeply concerned and feeling anxious, this verse comes to mind. And that's don't worry, don't be anxious, but tell God every single thing. But not only that, match your carrying everything to God, tell him everything with having an attitude about of being thankful for everything. Having an attitude of gratitude and making sure that you articulate in everything. So if I'm concerned about what my career, where my career is going, because it looks like the, the country is going to consistently shut down, I would say something like, God, 
Right now, I'm concerned about the well-being of my family. You called me to provide for my family, and everything seems like it's not going to be all right. But, God, I know that you are my provider. God, I thank you so much for every single time I've ever needed. You've provided for me. I thank you for the fact that you are my shepherd, and I can trust you. So, God, in the midst of me being concerned, God, I want everything to be all right. I want us not to just meet ends and ends to be met. I want us to be able to to set up things for generations with finances. So God, please, you take care of us as your children. That's how I do it in a pandemic. How do you do it? Next, we see this. It says, tell God everything Let go of the worry. It says, then you will experience the peace, God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand. Talk about flip it. <laughs> when, 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 when life just deals you with lemons or this tough hands and you flip it by telling God everything and being gracious, grateful and ha having gladness when you're having joy and you're staying true to God. It says then you will have the peace that surpass all understanding. Oh my goodness. This exceeds me more than people can understand. How in the world can you be at peace when everything shut down? How in the world can you be at peace and joyful when they handed out layoffs, when they're handing out layoffs, when your children are driving you crazy, when your children are acting up, when your spouse is doing all these things, how can you stay at peace? And you can say, you know what? I can't totally understand it because it's not my peace. This is God's peace that he's given me. Mm, mm, mm. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. Listen to me. Even now, as many of us experience tough adversity, <sighs> It says that Jesus' peace will guard your hearts and your minds. As you look at the scope of our country right now, people's hearts and minds look like they're consistently being attacked. But God wants to guard your mind and your heart in Christ Jesus. So stay true to him. Flip your circumstances by staying true to him. Flip your circumstances by always rejoicing, celebrating, having this peace and this gladness. Flip it by making sure you're consistently talking to God. And some of you say, Jason, hold up. You don't understand. Man, I used to have a lot, a lot of money. I used to have a lot, a lot of happiness. I used to have a lot, a lot of resources in the community. I used to have a lot, a lot, a lot of peace. But all of a sudden, since COVID have happened, or since these things in my life has happened, these things my life has taken a shift where I used to be in this tax income bracket, now I'm in a lower tax bracket. Or where I used to have to be okay managing uh, three employees, now Jason I have a hundred employees. Now I have this entire company. Things are different. Jason, how you gonna tell me to stay true? Jason, you don't understand. My kids were young. They didn't eat as much. Now they eat me out of house and home. Jason, you didn't understand. We were happily married and things were great. But now we're in this place. My life circumstances have changed. Here is the kicker. This is ultimately how you flip it. When you flip the coin that you have on the other side, it says, I can do what? all things. Here's what you got to understand. Paul is saying that I've learned how to have a whole lot of something, how to have a whole lot of money resources, and I've learned how to, how to rejoice when I have nothing. Nevertheless, in whatsoever circumstance I am, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me.
me. That is my perspective, Jason. That is the perspective, Philippians. That is the perspective, Gold Creek. Regardless of what life gives you, you have the ability through Christ to flip it, to look at life the way that he wants you to and be content with whatever, whatever stacks you, or whatever, with whatever hand you dealt, you can do it. You can do all things through Christ. You are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. God wants to celebrate your life with other people. God wants to use your life to show other people what it's like when you cling and stay true to him. God wants to show other people what it's like when you maintain joyfulness, rejoicing always. God wants the world to know what it's like to have his peace. And he's given you the strength to flip it, to take life circumstances just like everybody else has the same circumstances but you flip it regardless of how hard it is I can do all things through Christ God has allowed these things to happen to you so you can flip it remember being in jail is a gift with the right perspective it can give you a freedom like nothing else and Paul wrote this amazing beautiful book while he was in prison and now is your turn to share with the world the circumstances seem to lock you down how you are free and free indeed God help us help us to flip it and whatever circumstances we find ourselves in God, I pray that you give us your peace. God, that you give us your joy. God, that you give us your comfort and the right perspective to stay true to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God wants you as a father desires to be with the children who he loves so much. God wants you to grow in a deeper relationship with him. He wants to be the one who carries you. He wants to be the one who you run to and talk to about all your troubles. So right now where you are, I'm asking you just right now, begin to talk to God. Tell him about your stuff and make a commitment to consistently talk to him. And the way that you know that he's hearing you is by you following and submitting to Jesus. So I invite you to submit and follow Christ. Nothing comes.
Thank you so much for joining us for the message today. If you want to keep up to date with what we've got going on at Gold Creek, be sure to check out our social media platforms, as well as our website, goldcreek.org. That's where you can get to know what's going on, when the next service might be, what we're doing. So until next time, God bless.